We are heartbroken to share that we recently became aware of serious allegations of sexual immorality directed against Mike Bickle, the founder of IBKC. On October 26, the IBKC executive leadership team asked Mike Bickle, and he agreed to not preach or teach from the IBKC platform. Welcome back. Hey, hey. To our show, Table Talk Truth, with your host, Mama C and Papa C. How are you doing, Mama? I'm doing great, Papa C. I'm doing great. It's a new day. Mama, we will talk about a topic that I'm sure our viewers have been waiting for our input about. This has been out for about a month now, a month or two. This thing with Mike Bickle, Mama. This mm -hmm. is very interesting. It looks like this situation is all over the place, Mama. It does. It really does. It looks like it's a mess, Mama. So let's update our viewers on what's going on. I think back in October, it was revealed that Mike Bickle was accused of sexual misconduct with women that were working under him, especially young women. Um, and when it first came out, his leadership team at the church announced that um, they put him on leave or they agreed with the victims. They were standing with the victims. They didn't want to make the victims feel bad. And they actually came out with an announcement about this. So let's listen to the church leaders at, I think it's IHOP KC is the name of the church. So let's listen to that statement. It's been a, um, an incredibly difficult week in terms of trying to sort through all the uh, uh, different dynamics that are, that are taking place. I just want to read a statement um, that is from our IBKC leadership team. And, as, and, and, and then I want to take a moment and pray. And then I'm going to hand it back over to, to Isaac. This is a statement from the IBKC leadership team regarding allegations against Mike Bickle. We are heartbroken to share that we recently became aware of serious allegations of sexual immorality directed against Mike Bickle, the founder of IBKC. Our leadership team takes these allegations very seriously and we are laboring for truth light, redemption, and righteousness. We are engaging with outside parties to assess and arbitrate these allegations. Our priority is to love and serve the IBKC community during this moment. This news is unsettling for our spiritual family as well as our entire leadership team. Please pray for all involved, including the ones who have come forward, those who have experienced trauma, and for the Bickle family. We are asking for your patience as we work through this complex and very difficult situation. And secondly, we ask our spiritual family to refrain from using prophetic spiritual language that can be interpreted as dismissive of the pain of those who are traumatized. On October 26th, the IBKC executive leadership team asked Mike Bickle and he agreed to not preach or teach from the IBKC platform. attend our 24-hour prayer room, or engage his social media channels while we work with others to assess this situation. As difficult as this is for many, we are trusting Jesus, it's wise and good leadership to help and strengthen us as we anchor our hope in him. Mama, Mm -hmm. So we see that the church, the leadership, 
is in agreement with the victims that they believe that Mike did some type of wrongdoing. Mike Bickle. That's what they say. And Mike Bickle is the head pastor, or he's the founder of the church, IHOP KC, International House of Prayer. Hmm. So they agreed in the beginning. Pretty much. So a lot of things have happened in between that time. So what has happened now, Mama, is that the church, the leadership at IHOP is saying that they they don't they didn't find enough evidence for all the women. Now they're starting to disbelieve the women. They only see that there's one person or there's just enough evidence of one woman. They don't believe all the women anymore. Wow. So how does it change from they believe all the victims? Hmm. They want the, the, the church community to respect all the victims, but now hmm. it's they don't see enough allegations. They don't believe enough evidence. There aren't enough facts wow. against Mike Bickle to make a judgment about him. Sad part about this prophecy is this is really something that is typical in a lot of churches today where they have women who come forward with allegations and telling people that some of their pastors or some of the people in leadership have mishandled them in some type of way. We have even heard stories of molestation. And I'm not saying that in this case, I'm just saying we've heard those type of stories, but we also know that in this case, they were saying originally that he was guilty of sexual immorality. And so now my question is, how does that go from he's guilty of sexual immorality to now this is not true? There's Something not enough is evidence. is wrong with this picture. It seems like this is common in a lot of churches today. And I'm not saying all, but it's very common in a lot of these churches today where people aren't taken serious when they come with allegations about their pastors. And the truth of the matter is, it is because many of these people who support their pastors and support these churches, they are trained to protect the minister. They are trained to protect the person in leadership. So when something comes against that leadership, then automatically there's defense. There is, oh no, this can't be true. And the thing is, it's just that a lot of them, if you really think about it, they don't want to believe that it's true. Mama, they say, don't touch God's anointed. We hear that all the time. All the time. Do not touch God's anointed. Mama, what about not touching God's children? Exactly. What about the victims? What about the victims? That is a good point, prophecy. Because in the scripture, what is that scripture when it talks about how you are to treat God's, the most high God's children? I'm going to read a verse, um, prophecy in Luke 17. And it says, and this is Luke 17, verse 1, starting at verse 1. It says, and he said to his disciples, it is impossible for the stumbling blocks not to come, but woe to him by whom they come. It is better for him if a milestone is hung around his neck and he is thrown into the sea, than that he should cause one of these little ones to stumble. This is how important it is the, when you dealing with the flock, when you dealing with the, the children of the most high. This is why it's important to make sure that your interactions with them are holy and that you are making sure that you are treating them the way that you're directed to treat them according to the word and not mishandle them because you will have to pay a health a heavy heavy price for the way you treat the children of God mama this reminds me of the catholic church remember when they had the scandals come out with them abusing kids 
and a lot of people didn't want to believe it. Mm. And the worst thing that can happen in these types of scandals is the church investigates itself. And that's the problem with this whole mm. situation. Right. The church, they change their tune because they don't want to investigate themselves. Mm. In fact, we'll see inside this article that we'll, we will read that they don't want to hire. The big deal is that they said when, once this all happened, that they would get a third party investigator to find out the truth. Now it's been over. It's going on two months that they haven't brought in anyone to investigate this. And people are starting to get mad. And one of the leadership members said one of one person on the leadership team said they don't want to bring in a third party because they are going to find more stuff about the church. I hop KC. That's exactly what I'm thinking. It sounds like it's definitely protecting Mike Bickle. Bickle, but at the same time, it's not just protecting him. It's protecting others as well because he's the leader. And most of the time, the leader reflects what follows him. And so it's something else. It's my it's Mike definitely. But it's something else that they don't want to get out. And you, not you, but we have to ask, what is it? And if we think about it, what happened to the man who actually came out and said, he confessed his sins to me? We're going to read that, Mama. Mm -hmm. Well, let's okay. look at one of these women. They did an interview with her. We'll just call her Jane Doe. That's how they address her in this article. And this is from julieroys.com. We'll put the article inside the description. This is one of the women that he's alleged to have abused. She came forward with her story. It says in 1996, at age 19, Jane Doe decided to move to Kansas City to intern with one of her father's friends. Wow. A father's friend. Mm. Wow. Hmm. Mike Bickle, the 42-year-old prophetic pastor's preaching about King David had touched her heart. And mama, that's something that we're going to read and we're going to learn about Mike Bickle. He loves to use examples of King David. Hmm. One example, particularly of King David sleeping with Bathsheba. Hmm. He seemed to repeat that story to a lot of the women that he's alleged to abuse. Hmm. But let's keep reading the article. She says, I just remember feeling like he knew the same Jesus that I knew. Doe told the Roy's report in an inter in an exclusive interview. Soon after she arrived, she said Bickle told her she he had a dream about her. After a Sunday service in front of Bickle's wife, Diane. Doe said Bickle prophesied that he was David and Doe was Esther. Wow. He gives me the biggest word of my life, she told TRR. This is the Roy's report. It was, you're not, in, you're not just an Esther. You are going to lead thousands of Esthers. A few weeks later, listen to this, mama. Mm -hmm. A few weeks later, Bickle called Doe from Asia to say the Lord spoke to him about her she said this time though she said he sounded drunk mm. so this, this pastor wow. mike bickle has this female this young female's phone number and he's giving her calls hmm. while he's in asia and he sounds drunk he begins to tell me that the lord has spoken to him and that diane is going to die diane is his wife and that we're going to get married, she said. As he's talking to me, I'm thinking, is he drunk? Hmm. As he did start talking about the alcohol that was in the fridge that he had been drinking. From 1996 to 1999, Doe said Bickle put her up in an apartment by herself, gave her a key to his office, engaged in sexual interactions with her oh my and told her about the dream again and again he also began establishing the international international house of prayer kansas city wow 
My, my, my. This is this young lady's experience, mama. Mm. And isn't this young lady mm. married? So my question is, yes. why in the world would she even want to come out with something like this with a husband, knowing how it can make her husband feel about her or how it can cause him to perceive her? You have to think about how would that make a husband a husband feel when he realizes that his wife has been through some type of sexual misconduct. That wouldn't that affect a man, yes, Papa C? To hear his wife has been abused. Exactly. It abused. Would have, it would affect him deeply, Mama. And at the same time, that is trauma on her. So being that she has experienced that, it can affect her marriage in a negative way because now she has to deal with that trauma. So why in the world would she even come out with something like that with a husband? And then they say, no, Let, I mean, later they say it's not true. Why wow. would they? Yes. Why would they say it's not true, mama? Hmm. And this is something that we always talk about, especially with these mega churches. They like to hide stuff and sweep it under the rug because... Stories like these, scandals like these, disrupts the money. Exactly. Stops the money flow. Stops the donations. Exactly. That's why they hide things like these. That's why they don't want investigations, mama. I agree. And like we were saying, mama, they don't, they've changed the tune. The leadership team has changed their tune about Mike Bickle. First, they acknowledged that he was wrong. Now they're saying we don't have enough evidence. But let's read this other this Something next is wrong. Yes, let's read this next article about Mike Bickle himself confessing that he's done wrong to other people in their leadership team. This is on julieroys.com also. And this article says IHOP founder Mike Bickle confessed to bad judgments and bad mistakes with Jane Doe. Ministry leader says so I thought they said they didn't see enough evidence. Hmm. Now they're saying he's admitting that he, he made bad judgments. Really? Since allegations surfaced in late October that Mike Bickle sexually abused multiple women over several decades, Bickle has not spoken publicly. And mama, I've read other articles also. And these women that say that they were abused by Mike Bickle, they all have a similar story. They <laughs> all say that Mike repeated to them that, that he had a vision or a dream that his wife would die or their husband would die and they would get married to Mike Bickle. Oh my. So could all these women be lying about the same vision? Right. Something sounds fishy. Something sounds fishy. Hmm. Sounds like a cover of what I'm hearing. Again, Mama, you said this, that especially the the parishioners, the congregation, they put these pastors on a pedestal. Exactly. Where yes. they don't even believe the victim anymore. Exactly. And people just become so committed to their churches and their pastors that they don't know. I mean, that they no longer judge based on the word mm. of the most high God. Mm -hmm. Now they're just judging based on emotions. I feel that he's a good pastor. My pastor would never do this. And so they make flawed judgments. Mama, that's why we say on this channel, people need to read their Bibles for themselves and judge everything. Judge every man, judge every action, judge every behavior by biblical standards, by what the word says. Period. And if it looks different, then you have to judge according to how the Most High God tells you to judge and not based on your feelings. Because there's too many people in the world today who is operating based on their feelings. And that is causing them to have flawed judgment and no longer being able to discern matters. Mama, we want to hear from the audience. Y'all tell us what y'all think about this matter. But let's continue reading in this article. It says, but he has confessed 
privately to making bad judgments and bad mistakes with a woman who accused him of sexual misconduct. According to a ministry leader connected to IHOP KC, Dan Bohe, founder of Becoming Love Ministries, told TRR that soon after the allegations became public, Bickle made a private confession to me based on James 5. And that's James 5, 16, where it says believers are to confess their sins to each other so that you may be healed. Wow. So his friend is saying that David confessed to him. So this is a ministry leader, right? Yes. So wouldn't he hold some type of power? Wouldn't he be able to know something about my? He does. It's his friend. That's what I'm saying. So I guess if, if we're going to follow the leadership of IHOP, Mike's friend must be a liar too, right? If the women are liars, then his friend must be a liar who he confessed to. Right. And actually who he has given a position to. Mm. Because didn't Mike put him in that position? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Let's continue reading. It says, Bohe speaks regularly at IHOP, what you were just saying, Mama. Hmm. And according to a video of a 2021 IHOP KC service, Bohe's ministry gives $100,000 or more to IHOP KC a year. You just said a lot. Why in the world would anyone who is donating that much money to a church... Knowing that all of this money that I'm donating to this church, this is going to this particular pastor who's being, um, who's being accused of sexual misconduct. Mm -hmm. Knowing that this could affect his ministry that I believed in so much that I take out of my pocket mm -hmm. every year and give one hundred thousand dollars to this church. Mm -hmm. We have to think about this and make it make sense. Let's continue reading, Mama. Bohe said Bickle's confession involved the same woman who told the same woman as this Jane Doe who told TRR in an exclusive interview that Bickle had sexually abused her from 1996 to 1999 when she was 19 to 22 years old. And Bickle was in his 40s. And mama, these other articles that I've read, a lot of these women, they all were in their 20s. Mm. So. Babies. Babies. Mm. Isn't that, I don't know what's the definition. Maybe the audience can help me out. Mm -hmm. The viewers can help me out. It's the situation like with, with Bill Clinton and with Monica Lewinsky. When a person, especially a man in a higher power, uses his power over his young underlings, mm. his younger employees right. to make them feel like they have to submit to him yes. or they're going to lose their position. This is common in church leadership. Mm. Very common. Mm -hmm. And we hear the stories. And I know we're not the only one. If you all have heard some of these stories, these types of stories, please comment in the comment and let us know about it. Share it with us. Let's continue reading, Mama. At first, Bohe told TRR he didn't want to say anything about the confession because it was private. When TRR noted that Bickle was serving in public ministry and might be disqualified from ministry if the allegations are true, Bohe said he disqualified himself. Bohe added that Bickle said he's not going to minister again until everything is made right. Wow. Are we to believe that Bickle will step down and not come back to his ministry that he founded? Why would he? All of the people that are under him, <laughs> what are they saying? It's He's not, not guilty, exactly. right? They don't have enough facts. <laughs> and as long as people support these people in power, these leaders that are in power, mm -hmm. when they do those type of things... And they act out against God because really that's what they're doing. They're acting out against the most high God. Mm -hmm. When they do these type of things and you have people that are under them or are part of their church fellowship, they're a part of their church home. They, If they support them, what they do 
is now they feel like I don't really have to own it. Mm -hmm. This is what he's doing. Now yes. he's backing away. He yes. went and confessed to someone he considered a friend. And now he's saying that never happened. That was not true. And so what he's going to do now is eventually come back and start pastoring again, possibly get rid of the friend mm -hmm. who exposed him, mm -hmm. who really just told the truth. That is really what he was supposed to do. Because as we can see, Mike, he's not taking accountability. So yes, someone has to come and say, okay, well, I have to say this is what happened because I don't see him taking accountability. Because these type of leaders are not supposed to be in power. They are supposed According to step to the down. Exactly. And why step down if no one in your congregation and none of the people who are working among you, none of the leaders who you have put in power are holding you accountable? And the truth is most of the leaders will not because they are are afraid of their power being stripped away. They are afraid of their finances being stripped mm -hmm. away because a lot of churches, as we said before, and it's not just us, multiple people say this, who know about the church. Many churches are a business. And this is exactly what we're looking at. This is really about a business and money. As you can see, the man Dan was giving $100,000 to Mike Bickle every year. That's a lot of money, mama. That's a lot of money. Mama, the part mm -hmm. when you said that the church is a business, you are so right. Mm -hmm. Because in this article, and I'm going to put this link in the description so our viewers can go read this whole article themselves. It's a lot. It's a long article. They can go read this themselves and form their own opinion. Mm -hmm. And all this stuff is alleged. But the business part, mama, his, the, the lady who he abused, she stayed in the ministry. And like you said, she's married. Her and her husband ended up having a ministry under Mike Bickle's ministry. And the husband actually went and confronted Mike Bickle. And he was confronting him about they may come out with this. And Mike Bickle actually told him, her husband, that if they do, it'll be a, the biggest betrayal to mm. him. And he will stop supporting their ministry. Wow. He will stop financially supporting their ministry. Doesn't that sound like a bribe, mama? That sounds like a bribe. What does the scripture say about bribe? Hmm, Ecclesiasticus 20 and 29, it says, Presents and gifts blind the eyes of the wise and stop up his mouth that he cannot reprove. That says everything. So that's why they hold these, they want these lower, large donations, these mm -hmm. large amounts. That way they can hold it over them. Right. And that's why he had them under his wing because mm -hmm. he knew that you will not come up, mm -hmm. come out against me. Right. Because I will stop supporting you. This is probably your whole lifestyle. I'm supporting your whole livelihood. Mm -hmm. So it's either expose me or in your livelihood. Which one are you going to choose? That's a tough choice, mama. It is a tough choice. And it really depends on what is what the person values mm -hmm. at the end of the day and who do they really serve is it the pastor or is it the most high god you are so right mama mama this article i mean this whole situation is messy it's it still is going on very messy from what we see from the articles that we've read the things that we've seen it appears that mike bickle is he has a lot to, to own up to. He has a lot to to own up to and tell people what's going on because we're going to go with the victims and what they, they said. Because gonna, it happens all the time in the churches. Yes. This is not new. And he confessed that he did wrongdoing. He so he confessed. needs to come clean and say what he, can, what he did wrong. So he did something. So and not only did he confess, mm -hmm. his friend confessed as well. So everybody is not lying. So 
if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck. It must be a duck, mama. That's the saying. Not only did he admit to his friend in this article, also it says that he he actually admitted to two other leaders in the IHOP KC oh my. Uh, leadership. Right, he admitted right, right. wrongdoing. That the truth. So that's three people he three admitted people. wrongdoing to. And plus the women. I don't understand how people could come back after after well I do. Mm -hmm. We actually just touched on it. Right. <laughs> Bribery. It can make you dismiss a lot of facts when it comes to spiritual things. If your heart is not all the way with the most high God and is more on the things of this world and money, and like you said, if that's your whole livelihood and you depended on that thing, it can definitely blind your eyes yes. and pervert and it actually could like the scripture says. It can stop up your mouth mm -hmm. to where you cannot reprove. You cannot yes. give correction yes. to the wrongdoer. Yes. We're going to close on that, mama. Viewers, audience, we'd love to hear from you. What you think about this situation. Tell us your thoughts. We don't know everything. We're just going on what's public information and what we see out there. We would love to hear from you and hear your thoughts. Thank you. And we will talk to you on the next video. Talk to you soon.